Hi, and thank you for watching us here at Tax Talk UK, where we talk about all things tax and consider other important aspects of working for yourself, running a small business, being self-employed. So today, as part of our bite-sized demo videos showing you how to get the most from your QuickBooks um, online software, I am going to show you how to close the books and lock down your accounts for a certain period. And before I do that, if I could just ask, if you are new here, please do take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can easily refer back to this information if you should need to, and also find access to other information that we have on a whole host of different topics, all aimed at supporting you in your self-employment. If you navigate to the playlist section of our YouTube channel and look for the QuickBooks guidance, there you will find other videos that we have in our bite-sized demo um, series specifically for um, QuickBooks online users. So back then to um, locking accounts down, um, closing the books, as is the phrase specifically um, used in QuickBooks. And why do we need to do this? So um, if you are VAT registered, for example, and you are using your um, QuickBooks software to um, comply with making tax digital, you will know that if you, um, once you submit the tax, um, the VAT return, that QuickBooks knows which transactions have been um, uh, submitted on that return. And if anything's amended or if anything's added after that event, it will bring them forward to the next um, return. So that's um, that's no, no issue at all. But say, for example, if you have um, submitted your self-assessment tax return and you simply use the profit and loss to um, to 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 be able to to do that, then QuickBooks won't know what's been submitted and what hasn't. Um, so 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 therefore, if you have um, you have taken a, taken a snapshot of your information from QuickBooks and you've taken your income and your expenditure and your profit, and that is what you have used to um, compile your self-assessment tax return, um, your self-employed section, for example, then if if you then at a later date went in and entered an expense for that period, then of course, when you're generating the reports, it's not going to, it's not going to ever be included. So that expense, yes, it might make your bank reconcile, but the reason of reconciling your bank, for example, is to make sure that nothing's missed. So by by um, posting that transaction to a to a period that's already been finalized would mean that you're never going to claim that expense um, properly. And there's a whole other whole um, different host of reasons why you may want to make sure that you can't inadvertently post to a to a certain period. So depending on how you are running your accounts and your bookkeeping, you may at the end of each month take management accounts and want to make sure that nothing can be amended um, for, for that period. So there's lots of different reasons why you may choose to want to make sure that you can't inadvertently post um, before a specific um, a specific time. So QuickBooks has a function called close the books, which means that you won't be able to post to um, any period before the date that you have closed the books to. And I'm just going to um, hop into the demo software and I'm going to show you um, how that you do that. So here we are now in the dashboard of our demo company. And um, I want to close the books to the 31st of March, 2024. I've extracted my profit and loss. And I want to make sure that nobody can post any transactions now um, because otherwise um, those those trans those figures aren't going to be included. So I'm going to go to the um, settings, the gear cog, and I'm going to look for account and settings under the com your company um, menu. I'm then going to navigate to advanced 
on the left hand menu and you can see on the first um, on the first band accounting, you can see here we have an option to close the books. So I'm going to edit this section and I'm going to toggle on to close the books and I'm going to select the date that I want to close it to. And you, we have two options, so we can either allow changes after uh, after viewing a warning or changes after viewing a warning and entering a password. So it's up to you which you want to use. If you're the only person using the software, then you might may choose that a warnings um, acceptable. Um, so so you may feel that actually that you may accidentally just okay something. Um, without sort of fully um, noticing what the warning was and that the password is just a bit more protection. Um, if you have several people working in the software, then the closing the books will apply to all users. Um, so, for example, if you're the main person responsible for your QuickBooks and, um, and you want to make sure that nobody can, um, can do that, then you might want to enter a password that only you know, because then they have to tell you that they're going to change something. So this can be a way of managing if you have different people working at different levels in QuickBooks, because it may be if somebody is, um, for, exa for example, raising sales invoices or entering purchase invoices or just doing one um, small section of the, of the work that that person may not have the full understanding of the implications of um, entering something um, in the in the in a closed period, so it, you can either uh, allow changes after warning and save, or allow after a, a, a view. Sorry, allow changes after viewing a warning and entering a password, and then you put the password in here, and and we just save that. And so I'm just going to do view after a warning. I'm going to save. So you can see now we've got closed books on 31st of March. And then next year, we would just simply edit and change the date. And I'm just going to show you what happens if we try to enter a transaction, just so you can see um, what's going to happen. So I'm just going to um, select anything. And I'm going to pick a date before we close the, um, before we close the books. And I'm going to... Um, just enter anything just so that you can see. So you can see if I go to save this, it's going to tell me double check the transaction date. This transaction was on or before your company's closing date. Using this date will affect your books. Are you sure you want to save? So if we said yes, then that transaction would be allowed. So um, again, it would depend on the reason why you'd close the books and who else is accessing the QuickBooks, whether you felt that this is secure enough or whether you wanted to have the password as well. Now, say, for example, if we had um, we had already submitted the self-assessment tax return, say, for example, this is a, a sole trader. We've submitted the self-assessment tax return to to the 31st of March and we've got this transaction. It's now just come to light. If we entered this in March, then that transaction, that expense is never going to be claimed because we've already reported on that period. So we would simply change the date to the 1st of April to bring it into um, to this year. So that is how we would um, close the books. And that is how we would deal with any transactions that genuinely did need to be entered. Um, but the the period had been closed and so we would just enter them with with the first available date and we could put a note in the memo to explain um that uh, you know a late transaction the invoice arrived late the purchase invoice arrived late and we weren't aware of it so it's been entered but it's been entered as the first first of april in order to bring it into the next um the next available accounting period because what we must always remember is yes, um, QuickBooks does a lot for us, um, but it's only it's all based on the information that's inputted. So as I say, if you have taken the information um, for a period and you then enter a transaction after that after that date, then it's not going to be showing on your report. So unless you're using the software, as I say, for example, with VAT. 
um, once the VAT return submitted, it the software would know that it's already included that um, transaction or it hasn't included that transaction. So it can be a little bit um, tricky to get your head around. If you're not completely sure what's going to happen, then just take the time when you enter the transaction, how you think is correct, and then just check your reports. So if you're concerned about entering a late transaction for, um, for, for something, for VAT, for example, or um, for, for um, uh, on a profit and loss, enter the check the report before and then enter the transaction and then check the report again to check if it's hap what you think is happening. Because although that may see seem a long winded, it's really important that you have a good understanding of where your information is coming from when you're generating the report, generating um, VAT returns. But as I say, a really helpful um, function because it's really easily done, especially quite soon after um, a year end or a month end, depending on a, how you're managing your books. But it's a really good um, feature, especially helpful if you've got several people working in um, QuickBooks in your business. As I say, it will closing the books will apply to all users. So thank you very much for watching and um if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Goodbye.